uh, let's say the proxy provider is advertising that they have one hour sticky session. This, in reality, if it's a real residential proxy, might not be possible because this is a device of a real user. They can log out anytime. You don't have control over that, right? So that's why it's important to check with the provider, with the proxy provider, what's going to happen if uh, this, this happens. So what proxy do you provide? Are you going to provide the uh, IP from the same region, from the same city, state, what, whatever? Because otherwise, um, it's going to be inconsistency again. Hey, what's up? This is Stan, and we are here at Affiliate World Bangkok. And here with me, it's Martin. Martin is a representative from Smart Proxy, and today we actually are meeting it, meeting each other for a second time. We saw each other and we talked on a Barcelona event. Uh, today we have a special topic for you, specifically related to account bans and restrictions. But before we go deep diving into this topic, Martin, what's up? How's it going? Going really well, enjoying the environment here. It's a little bit uh, hotter than I expected. But yeah, you know, it's amazing. So many people, so many companies. It's absolutely perfect. So Smart Proxy is a proxy provider. Duh, right? Yes, yes, the Smart smart Proxy, yes, absolutely. And you also, so there's many use cases how a proxy can be used. And one of the, uh, let's say, not, not maybe not most popular ones, but uh, like a popular use case uh, that many of people here on this conference talk about our account management, like Absolutely. Facebook accounts, Google accounts, TikTok accounts, and so on and so forth. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically we are working alongside with multi-login and we, uh, we, we help clients with uh, creating the accounts, right? So in order to create the accounts in a, in a correct way, not to get banned, you need proxy technology, obviously, to manage the accounts as well. Uh, so yeah, we are really happy about cooperating with, uh, with multi-login. So yeah, essentially that's one of the one of the use cases for proxy technology. That's right. We're also really happy to recommend a Smart Proxy as uh, one of the providers uh, for social media account management. Um, one of the very popular topics uh, are account bans, and I'm sure when users utilize Smart Proxy, they also come to Smart Proxy support and ask why my account got banned. What do you think, what are the top reasons why accounts get banned? From a proxy provider perspective, what are the main reasons why accounts get banned? Yeah, so basically one of the, one of the reasons could be the leaks of the IP. So for example, let's say some clients choose to, to, to use free proxies. So with free proxies, basically you don't have um, good IP, you don't have good connection. So that's why there are leaks of the IP. So basically what happens is that uh, actually the website that you're visiting, that you're targeting can see the shifts in the IP and like that, uh, yeah, your IP is leaked and you get blocked. So what we usually recommend in these cases is uh, clients can use a website called ipleak.net. So on this website, you can actually check like uh, uh, specifically about your connection, like what are the countries, what are the IPs that are relevant to that, right? So that's what we usually recommend. And uh, obviously, yeah, what, what proxy you're using essentially. In, you, in your opinion, what leaks lead to most amount of bans? So it could be DNS leak specifically, uh, something that uh, need to be careful with. Another thing is uh, WebRTC parameter as well. So that's something that clients need to, need to take care of as well. Uh, if you talk about DNS leaks, what do you think, what's the best way to avoid them? Uh, so basically choosing the, the right proxy, choosing a stable proxy, checking as well, basically having like a test of the proxy, how it works and making sure that actually this proxy is reliable enough before actually um, putting it to work in your accounts, right? So to make sure that you have good reliable system uh, in order to avoid the blocks, right? So to avoid DNS leaks, you actually have to choose a really good uh, proxy provider. That's right. Yes, yes, of course. Of That's course. true. Uh, we also kind of like analyzed uh, a couple of proxy providers and really happy that Smart, Smart Proxy doesn't have these leaks. Uh, if some proxies are configured incorrectly, they can lead uh, by like uh, by doing DNS checks, they can lead back to the backend server which the backend server can be in Germany or Israel or maybe right. in Russia. And if you're emulating a user in, for example, in the United States, uh, then uh, this type of leaks will, uh, like, will create a very big inconsistency. I do want to say one thing, like even within normal distribution of users, DNS leaks also happen, but they are rare, right? But it also happens. And the reason why it happens is because when ISPs, they uh, kind of like situated in one country, 
and then uh, they give off internet to let's say a subsidiary country in a not in a similar country then DNA, dns leak happens but dns leak happens in this case that uh, where there's a country nearby but if it's a proxy uh, proxy has to be configured totally agree with you that's right so there it comes uh, the second the second issue that uh, is related to account bans and this is choosing the the right proxy technology so last time in barcelona we covered specifically that that part but it's good to, to remind that you need to choose the right the right proxy right so you need to understand does it need to be a static ip when you're creating the accounts what uh, what proxy you need to use uh when exactly you need to use mobile proxies as well so it's important to say that you need to have a stable proxy at first place in order to avoid leaks but also let's say when you're creating the accounts you need to use we recommend clients to use um, residential proxies then for managing the accounts to use static data center ips one of our products and uh, actually mobile proxies are something else that works because with mobile proxies even if they are rotating uh, you're still not getting banned because of the nature of the proxy right mm -hmm. that's true so in case of it's just a residential ip that is situated in in a home environment it, if it changes too often it can be also a potential problem right yes yeah, so what happens is that your account gets uh, flagged first and uh, we actually have uh, cases sometimes when the clients are coming and they're saying well my account got blocked so what happened is that uh, we can't do anything on our end clients just need to use the proxy at first place in order to replicate the the um, organic uh, usage right very true uh, so i actually met a couple of users here who are just using proxies to manage their facebook accounts what do you think uh, like uh, what do you think is it a good approach just to use proxies just to use proxies uh, specifically with multi-login, right? No, actually, that, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, uh, is it a safe proof uh, solution to use only proxies, proxies to manage uh, accounts? Or you should have some, something similar to multi-login or some sort of browser? Uh, yes, of course, it's always more reliable to have, uh, to have like a uh, tool like multi-login uh, because multi-login can also manage the fingerprint, right? So proxy essentially, yes, you can use it only but if you want to be on the safe side if you're managing plenty of accounts you need to make sure that the fingerprint is managed as well so that's actually another thing that uh, probably you will be able to cover um, regarding fingerprint so how is multi-login helping clients with the fingerprint so yeah uh, a proxy is a good thing because it's one of the most uh, identifiable pieces of information a website can collect however and and here's where the problem comes right so um, a user wants to change the IP address to seem unique or seem distinct. And then when you change the IP address, all other parameters have to follow. Yeah, there is WebRTC leak that you said, and this WebRTC leak is uh, also uh, like reveals your real IP. So if it's not substituted, uh, then uh, a, like uh, a website can understand that actually like your actual IP address also um, there's time zone and geolocation. That's right. Yes, right? yes. That's something super important that you need to be really careful with because that's how they can detect. Like uh, the, the website can detect inconsistency between uh, like the proxy, the, the, the location that of, the, of your proxy, the time zone and the time zone of your device. Right. So it's really important when let's let's take uh, United States as an example. Right. We have several time zones in the United States. So it's important when you're getting the proxy, the proxy shouldn't not only be from the US, but it needs to be from the specific state, right? And you need to make sure that the, the time zone and the location settings are off in order to make sure that, right, it's, there is no inconsistency between, between the proxy and the time zone. True. Uh, quickly coming back to the topic of uh, rapidly changing IP address, if it's, yeah. uh, let's say, a, r a residential IP address. I know Smart Proxy has a timer of 30 minutes which is actually more than enough for to open a profile or even work in a couple of profiles yeah, for yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, some amount of time. But my question is, if the IP changes mid-session, and it can happen because I might be working with an account for one hour, so it can happen in a situation that a residential static IP can change. Um, is it important to have like the same city and ISP configured? So, yeah, I that's that's actually really really important because it's important to have the same ip from the same location 
So that's why... Location meaning city or area or country? City or area, yes, yes. So it's completely fine with residential proxies, even if the, uh, let's say, the proxy provider is advertising that they have one hour sticky session. This, in reality, if it's a real residential proxy, might not be possible because this is a device of a real user. They can log out anytime. You don't have control over that, right? So that's why it's important to check with the provider, with the proxy provider, what's going to happen if uh, this, this happens. So what proxy do you provide? Are you going to provide the IP from the same region, from the same city, state, what, whatever? Because otherwise, um, it's going to be inconsistency again. But is it important to have the same IP from the same ISP? Uh, regarding that, not sure. Not sure, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we also analyzed this. Uh, like uh, We saw that if, you change it, if it changes to a different ISP, it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, okay. okay. If it's from this, maybe uh, like, uh, like systems have not developed so far into checking the consistency of the ISP, don't know why maybe it can accept that the user has changed to a different like wi-fi router for example yes Me actually you're right so yeah. it can lead to false positives if uh, if such detection method will be implemented yes yes that's actually completely organic because it happens right yeah not not just too often so it doesn't uh, seem very suspicious that's right yeah and speaking about that essentially probably one of the most important things when managing multiple accounts is to mimic the actions of a person. So you need to be able to replicate organically. So you see, speaking about the ISP, changing ISP, this needs to happen in an organic way. And it's the same when you manage the account, right? So for example, specifically in the beginning when the account is not warmed up yet, you need to make sure that you're replicating the activities of a real person. So it means that you're not gonna go and uh, post the same comment under several accounts or like go and follow immediately 1000 people you need to be, be sure and to, 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 to be thinking what would a real person do, right? Especially in the beginning when the account is not warm. The behavioral analysis is very important, right? So websites, uh, because uh, like IPs can be changed, right? So fingerprints can be changed. What website, like what else do they have? They have uh, like big websites that have big data, such as Google, Facebook, Amazon, eBay, maybe Microsoft already. Um, they like they cannot really rely on fingerprints and proxies detection because they always change but behavior is something that like a big data allows them to make the process more expensive for people who are managing accounts so that's very true uh, there's very a lot of like maybe intricate details on how to do that uh, we actually talk about this on many of our podcasts um, but I wanted to ask about uh, like one just final question. You also you also said that you have to go to a proxy provider and ask them how do they treat if an IP has been changed? How does smart proxy treat it? So specifically about residential proxies, if uh, you choose a sticky session, first of all, clients that are using multi-login with us, most of them are using our default 10 minute sticky session and it's totally enough. If something happens and you don't get the same IP anymore, you're gonna get an IP address from the same uh, area. So for example, if we say that you selected a specific city in the US or a specific state in the US, you are going to get an IP from this specific state or the area around if there is no available IP at the moment. So we do that in order to avoid breakdown in the system and to ensure that it's like uh, smooth actions uh, from the, on the client side, right? Then uh, we also have another product, which is uh, static data center IPs. And basically with static data center IPs, you're getting a list of data center IPs. And uh, yeah, essentially they are static. You can do with them, you can rotate them if you need, you can uh, just um, uh, use them with multi-login and uh, they don't change. So basically you're responsible for how you use these IPs. Understood, really cool. Thanks very much for sharing this type of Thanks information. Thanks a lot. Always a pleasure. Always. I think some people who are using uh, pr some proxies already, some cheap proxies, they should reconsider because <laughs> like, you know, this, these are your accounts, right? You have to put uh, them to quality resources. Thanks very much for coming, man.